Ladies and gentlemen, now that I've gotten caught up in my paperwork, let's go ahead and move forward to Corellia. I have landed on Corellia. The ledge is near. Roth, you are there to protect Darth Thauron from Barriss's threats. Our efforts to locate his secret headquarters are ongoing. Another digit of the hand will tap the Roth. Meanwhile, we are tracking three assassins arriving on secret landing fields. It will be difficult to stop them all. Leave that to me. Transmitting the coordinates for all three landing strips. Received, my lord. These killers are but the first. There will be more. Faron actively defies Barris. If he dies, Barris will be named the voice of the Emperor. Protect Darth Faron at all costs, and aid in his attempts to undermine our enemy. Goodbye. My lord, I'm detecting a forced transmission. I assume you still recognize me. Consider yourself fortunate that I am reaching out like this. I'm sorry, should I know you? Your wit is not improved. It must be ignorance driving your actions. As wronged by me as you may feel, surely you are not intentionally defying the Emperor. I'm here to tell you that you are being deceived. The organization you work for is not the Emperor's hand. Why don't you enlighten me? All you need to know is that you are the puppet of a sect that the Emperor cast off. They seek his destruction. I am his voice. I don't expect you to trust me, and in the end, you and what you think are inconsequential. So believe what you will. But your handlers have you in over your head, sticking your wet nose in Darth business. You've convinced me. I will steer clear of this conflict. I will judge you by your actions, not your words. Walk away now, and perhaps our previous animosities can be swept aside. He's the one who needs to seek forgiveness. Also, you can tell he's legitimately scared because he reached out to us like that. Similar to Thanaton, he has just revealed his weakness as a consequence of doing that. Don't let him get to you, Vet. No more talk. Barriss's assassins must be stopped. So, back to Mega Man music. As we crush, uh, so I've talked a lot about how many of the classes have made missteps in the stories, and a lot of those missteps have been a matter of structure. Like, while we're doing this plot, let's go do this side quest for some stupid reason. You're good to go. How many times has that happened on how many classes in this game? Don't answer that. Here's the relevant point. We're about to effectively go do a side quest, and yet it's going to work. Do you know why? I'm just going to answer you. Because it's down to execution. It is always down to execution. We're about to go meet a fantastic character who's probably going to be a positive, maybe even two, by himself. And, it's, while we're on the subject, even this interaction is still directly connected to our overall main plotline. We're not going after Valron to save him because he's a cool character. We don't know that yet. We are doing this because he is going to be an ally of ours in our primary goal of taking down Barris. We are about to gain a huge amount of political clout and prestige because we are a wrecking ball. Whether we are light or dark, we are an absolute death machine. It's one of the key character traits of the Sith Warrior. It's in the class name, for God's sakes. Juggernaut. So... We were a wrecking ball for Barris. He never actually gave us a lot of clout or, or prestige. He just allowed, it to, allowed us to act on his behalf. 
Valron is about to vouch for us and basically give us the political oomph to declare ourselves formally and legally the Emperor's Wrath. That's going to give us the clout we never had before. And then Valron will be able to benefit from having a wrecking ball who works with him or for him. In short, Valron is about to gain all of the benefits that Barris just threw away. And I, I think probably at the end of the day, the reason I love this so much is because it makes so much sense. You know that if this was real life and, you know, the Force actually existed, and if there was someone who was just as insanely overpowered as the Sith Warrior was, that they would, they, people would probably be shoving over each other to try and either contest them or get on their side. Oh, hang on. And of course, if you're paying attention, you know full well why it is Nobody that Barris threw us away. Us now. Now, I talked about it a lot yesterday, and I know some of you weren't there for that, so I'm just going to repeat myself very, very quickly. The reason that Barris threw us away was because of his key critical flaw. He's paranoid. He could not help but think of us as a threat because he thinks of everything as a threat. So he threw us away out of what can only be referred to as fear. How appropriate is that? And I think we actually... Well, as with most mental health issues, paranoia is a gradient, but yes, I would say Barris has legitimate paranoia. You're good to go. Seth, identify yourself. Hi. I don't answer to droids. Target locked. Well, hello there. I believe is my line. And yes, you create your own character in this game. The irony is that's actually not true, Alex. I know you're just quoting, but it is funny to think about. It is still paranoia, even if they're actually out to get you. Down you go. Next! Oh no, with this particular Sith Warrior, we absolutely would have turned on Barriss. Ironically, my light side warrior probably would have turned on Barriss someday too, just not for the reasons he's probably thinking. However, what Dr. Winter points out is correct, but an invalid point. No offense, Dr. Winter. Because the problem is that's true for everyone in the Sith Empire. It's one of the reasons the Sith Empire is flawed at its core. No matter what, no matter how or when or where, you are st you're screwed. There is no such thing as stability within the Sith Empire. Why would my Sith Warrior have turned on him? Because he's evil. And he needs to be removed from the board. Especially given how much damage he was causing to his own people. A welcoming committee. <laughs> Some days you just can't land secretly on a planet. Even on a secret landing strip. This is going to be your secret graveyard. Oh, you're funny. I like that. Not a lot of funny in my line of work. I know who you are. You're the apprentice Darth Barris thought he had killed. Marvelous. I've studied you. Followed your exploits across the galaxy. You're a personal hero of mine. Didn't know I had admirers. In my profession, you're well known. But I'm somewhat obsessed, I admit. The way you handled Lord Grathen on Dromund Kos was genius. Yes, I know his son's behind the mask now. You took out Noman Carr and Admiral Monk and the War Trust and countless Jedi. Good, good stuff. It's nice to be appreciated. It's an honor to meet you. So sad I have to kill you. I've imagined facing you. And given my knowledge, I have pretty good ideas on taking you down. Well, step one. Here. Not even facing let it. Let me show you. 
Yes, Actually, it's funny because we've had this discussion about a, an empire being flawed down to its code three times in three separate MMOs. Now, the funny thing is, two of those are deliberate, and one of them kind of lucks its way into still not being bad writing. The Garlean Empire, the Klingon Empire, and the Sith Empire. As we talked about, the reason the Sith Empire endures is because of the Federation. Full stop. No argument. <laughs> we debated that and discussed that at length during the STO run. The only reason the Klingon Empire hasn't completely fallen apart is because the Federation hasn't let it. Then we have the Garlean Empire. Now, I'm not going to spoil, but um, the Garlean Empire absolutely was designed to be the despair engine, as we talked about it. Just decided to be chukum, 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 chukum. And then, of course, we have the Sith Empire. Now, this is actually getting a little bit into spoilers, but the long and the short of it is that the Sith Empire is designed to be flawed in-universe, not just out-of-universe. It is built to be a non-stop grinder. <laughs> For reasons we'll get into later. An empire I would call good other than my own, of course, Act. I feel like there's actually several. Of course, now I'm having trouble thinking of any. All better. Where's the... Uh oh. What do we got? Hey, Latario. Ralph, I mark your position. The third of the three secret landing strips. Your third target arrived earlier than expected. I am Servant Eleven of the Hand. You were told to expect my call. You were supposed to uncover Darth Valron's secret headquarters. Tell me you've succeeded. With great difficulty, I discovered the Darth secret headquarters. Transmitting the coordinates. He is operating within hostile territory. A massive tower in the heart of Incorporation Island. All Republic controlled. Amazing. What's so amazing about that? It is the last place Barris would look. Valron wages the war right under the Republic's noses. His operations must be disguised as Republic. But if I found him, Barris's missing assassin could too. Hold? Yes? I will convey it. Eleven out. Servant 2 has spoken to me. He says to be ready for suspicion. Servant 2 communicates with you telepathically. Yes. When Servant 2 whispers, all agents of the Hand hear him. My mission is complete. I am recalled. The Hand hopes you find Valron before the Assassin strikes. So hold up. You're the Hand, but you're number 11 of the Hand. So, so... Oh my god, it's the Six-Fingered Man. It makes so much sense! Oh. <clears throat> Right. Sorry, I just wanted to make a Princess Bride reference. And I had to turn off the music, Luco. You showed up, and I know you hate Mega Man music. Um, Empires that I would consider good. I know there are some. I'm just struggling to think of some. Ironically, I just thought of another one, but it's also one of mine. From my own fictional setting, so uh, I'm going to discount that one, too. Alright, alright. Just for you, Luco. Because you're awesome. Hmm. Now that's an interesting question, to Act. I suppose the fact that they're not evil qualifies. You know, I was actually thinking of both the Rosarian and the Arcadians in FF12. They're not evil empires, but they're also not good empires. They're just empires. Which, I mean, that's cool. <laughs> but the question was, I need to find a good empire.
All better. God, really, Justin? And nobody noticed because nobody had any idea how amazing that film was going to be. Well, the thing is, and I've actually talked about this before, uh, because of World War I, yes, really, Empire has been associated with evil in common cultural consensus, at least in the West, for about a century now. So, the term Empire is almost universally used to refer to evil organization. Kingdoms can be whatever, yeah, there's all sorts of kingdoms, but kingdoms usually are, like, neutral leading towards evil. Whereas, if you hear about a republic, or a democracy, or a federation, they're almost always the actually good organization. All better. I mean... I know that certain clickbaity YouTubers are going to debate this, but let's be real. The Federation, the United Federation of Planets, is a good organization. Now, the Klingon Empire, the Romulan Star Empire, Nobody better mess with us now. Uh, no, I have not, Letario. I don't like DreamWorks films. There are, like, two exceptions to that. Yeah, something that always irritated me about Ira Stephen Bear... Well, okay, actually, actually, a lot of things irritate me about that guy. But one of the things that really irritated me is he seemed insistent on proving that the Federation was evil. Let me qualify that for a second. He wasn't about proving the Federation wasn't paradise or wasn't perfect. He skipped over, like, over here from perfect, past good, past neutral all the way down to evil. He wanted to prove that the Federation was way down here. And that was just a bug up his ass the entire time he was working on TNG and DS9. Sif, are you lost? You're in a Republic-aligned corporate headquarters. You're a terrible actor, dude. Your accent is poking through, fool. Uh, well, never mind that. The Consortium of Corporations has cameras in every corporate lobby, so we are being observed by the Empire's enemies as we speak. A Sith comes in here, he's gonna meet resistance, so, uh, we're gonna have to kill you. Okay, normally I'd kill you, but really, dude? Stop pretending. You're getting on my nerves. Really sorry. Just can't do that. Sound the alarm! I almost spit out my tea for that one. Nobody better mess with us now. And of course, I'm fighting without my lightsaber, because who needs a lightsaber? Oh, that's why I need all those cybernetics, Jay Palmer. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Latario asked me which DreamWorks film, so let's hit the stream breaks. Let's see, DreamWorks films. What do we got? What do we got? Give me a list. Let's see. I've actually seen a decent number of these, but they all suck. All of them! Uh, let's see here. 
I liked Shrek 2. I liked Shrek 4. I hated Ants, but I've never seen it a second time because of how much I hated it, so make it that what you will. So Barris's most deadly apprentice has finally found us. My master has been on to you from the beginning. Save us all a lot of trouble and get Valron here now. Oh, don't worry. He'll come to survey your remains. Valron can smell Barris's ploys a thousand light years away. He knows the rift between you and your master is a ruse, painstakingly orchestrated to get you close enough to strike. So, drop the act. You won't believe anything I say, will you? Say that your Barris is stooge, and I'll believe you. But either way, I have to kill you. Die, assassin. I have seen Kung Fu Panda, and Kung Fu Panda 2. Alright, now to kill Valron's apprentice because he doesn't believe I'm here to help him. You know, it's just my life now. Yep, no, he's dead. You saw. I tried to be reasonable. It actually takes me a minute because I'm full tank spec, but, you know. Notice my health isn't moving, which is why I'm full tank spec. So anyways, now he's dead. Where is Darth Valron? You'll never find out, scum. You defeated Lord Harish, but you can't overcome the three of us at once. Oh my god, dude. Stop! Lord Ket, stand down! So this is Valron. My lord, retreat into the shadows. We will stop this assassin. There could be ten of you and you would fail. Leave us. I don't care if they're here. Spare them. They pose no threat to you or your master. I applaud you. Convey my congratulations to your master for his superior gameplay. The kill is yours. I ask only that I not suffer the indignity of decapitation. The last thing I want is your death. Barris is not my master. My mission is to bring him down. Nothing more can be gained by maintaining the deception. Ah, if this is true, the game is renewed. <laughs> You notice the storyboarding in Sith Warrior is just Darth better. Valron. Barris says you gotta die. Like you've noticed that, right? Barris strikes. I mean, that's true in Corellia, especially. Like, I feel like they brought their A game here, but think about some of the absolutely bonkers, terrible storyboarding in the rest of the game. Anyways, so you'll notice how once again Sith Warrior is doing one of the best things it does. It establishes who and what a character is immediately. I think you're right, Blade Jabal. And no, to my knowledge, Letario, there's no way not to kill Harash. Also, I hope your power system gets fixed soonish. The Stealth Ranker. Yes, I do remember the Stealth Ranker. Anyways, so what do we know about Va Valron the first second he shows up? He walks up, he is polite, he is affable, he admits defeat, and asks us to spare his fellows. Boom, 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 and we know exactly the type of person Valron is in, like, ten seconds. Sith Warrior continually does this kind of exceptionally good story, uh, story processing in how it showcases its characters quickly and efficiently. And now we get to learn about how amazing he is. He also got a good voice actor, and he's also intelligent enough to recognize that trying to fight us is not worth anybody's time. I believe the line was, there could be ten of you and it wouldn't matter. That assassin had me dead to rights. You did not hesitate to defend me. My friend, I am convinced. What's more, I believe, with my help, you can defeat Darth Barris. I was hoping you'd say that. 
Then, uh, I have a little confession to make. It is true that I'm here to lead our important war effort, but there are other reasons I chose Corellia. Significant pillars of Barris' power base are here, and together we can tear them down. Hold up. I like Valron a lot. But you notice how this is the third time, and not the last time, that there are Sith who are actively using the attack on Corellia, which is a major, major cornerstone of the entire war as a way to pursue their own personal agendas. I'm interested in any chance to hurt Barris, but he will make more attempts on your life. You must relocate to my ship, where my crew can protect you. Far be it from me to defy you. My protection here has taken a recent hit. But before I go, let me guide you. Most of the Dark Council knows Barris is not the Emperor's true voice, but Barris's two top agents force them to support his bid. One agent safeguards secrets that he uses as leverage. The other leads Jedi Masters in campaigns against Sith who defy him. Now, if they were to disappear... My old master will be left high and dry. Ah, exactly. His support on the Council will evaporate. Barris's first undercover agent is posing as Colonel Senks of the Karelian Resistance. His stronghold is a labyrinth of secret passages. Unless you scramble his security codes before laying siege, he'll be able to flee through a dozen different escape tunnels. What about Barris's other agent? Uh, my operative is uncovering the identity and location of his Jedi infiltrator. I expect results soon. For now, Senks. These pulse disruptors will kill all electronic code emissions, effectively locking Senx's secret passages. In truth, he's a fantastic resource. It will be a shame to lose an agent of his caliber. I'll compel him to denounce Barris and join you. An excellent solution, if it can be done. My apprentices and I will report to your ship now. The minute I can point you to the second of Barris's agents, I will. For now... Colonel Sinks. Some of you who've watched me for any length of time know that I have a long-standing theory about the Ferengi Alliance. My lord, I have Darth Varun here for you. My friend, I am in the hands of your crew now. <laughs> they are an interesting assortment. My people are capable, don't worry. I hope their talents are not required. If Senx doesn't hand over the files he safeguards once you've neutralized him, I advise destroying his database to eliminate it all. Uh, once done, contact me. But leave the compound first. It's Barris's facility and sure to be bugged. Until then. They are definitely capable, except for Brunmark. Anyways, I've had a long-standing theory that the Ferengi Alliance is predominantly consisted of a bunch of morons, but actually held together by the few intelligent people who everyone, you know, underestimates because they're just Ferengi, right? I bring that up because I'm not sure I'm willing to give Bioware that level of credence in writing, but it wouldn't surprise me if the only reason the Sith Empire functions is because of the smart people amongst the morons. That's at multiple levels, too. Obviously, we'll actually see more of that during the agent playthrough. But I think that's true, yeah, that's what I thought. I think that's true even amongst just the Sith. And yeah, Mar and Valron are both good examples of higher up Sith who keep things running. I need to actually empty my inventory here. Uh, or not, we'll do it at the next stop. Vehicle pads are currently open for business. Hey, Hazardous. I know, right, Alex? I mean, it's a common trope, really. A few intelligent people keeping the morons in check. Probably because that's probably how real life works. Probably.
That's true, Blake Javal. You'll, you'll remember Vengeon, who was in favor of restarting the war, was considered very unpopular amongst the Council before Barris started moving against him. So instead of squirrels for brain, they're cocaine for brains? Yeah, then there's Thanaton. He is... He's an interesting case. There it is. You, I need my drugs! Give me my drugs! Give me my drugs! Come again! Listen, we are the best Jedi Knight ever. Now, you know what should have happened is Valron should have seen us. He said, listen, there could be a hundred of you and you couldn't defeat him. But well, he is the sister of the Kuvma. And everyone else, oh, you're right. Gosh. Everyone just puts down their weapons. Interestingly, Jadis is a unique one because he is simultaneously very stupid and very smart. But again, we'll get there. Oh, and don't expect me to go with the awesome cutscene, even though it's awesome and gets a plus by itself. I don't even remember the specific route to get that cutscene anymore. See, the problem is, as much as that cutscene is awesome, it it leaves problems, you know? Well, you see, Jay Palmer, we know Jedi Knight would win. Because Jedi Knight took down the Emperor without even trying when he was supposed to be the Emperor and not just another voice. Like, I'm pretty sure the fact that the Vitiate in the temple being a voice is a retcon. Now, the reason that's relevant is that means that when Jedi Knight was written, it was intended that we don't kill an Emperor's voice, we kill the Emperor. And that is a distinction. There it is. I mean, it's kind of... We'll, we'll get there, Dimashi. I've said it many times, the only story that in my mind could ever question Sith Warrior for superiority is Agent. That's why we did the least two last. Hello. I actually hit the wrong button there. I didn't mean to do that. Listen, Alex. The only way we could ever possibly describe this game, excuse me, the Jedi Knight story arc, is by referencing drugs. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, okay, whatever. It's probably respawning. Oh, the drugs level. Right, right, right. Listen, all I'm saying is that it was a drugs level. I mean, let's be honest, that was a drugs level. They're all dead. Help that person out. Let's see if we can find the way up. Is there another way up? There is another way up. Oh, 
Well, it was so much of a drugs level, it gave me a headache. I had to go rewire the game in order to make that work out. Yeah, no, thank you. I'm just here to help. Don't mind me. Yeah, Psychonauts 2 is an amazing, fantastic, wonderful game that gave me a headache for one entire level. Until I fixed it. I know that code is right. Why aren't my escape passages opening? The answer just broke into your command center. Aye. Strong enough to demolish my forces, and smart enough to take out my tech. When the alarm sounded, I knew there was trouble coming. Don't strike! I'm a secret Imperial agent working directly for Darth Barris. That's not news to me. You discover and keep secrets for Barris that he uses to gain power and control others. My work keeps rogue Imperial elements from destabilizing the Empire. But that's just part of what I do. I'm essential in the fight for Corellia. I steer Republic-aligned resistance forces into battles they can't win. Shut me down, and we lose this war. Cooperate, and you may survive this encounter. You collect secrets for Darth Barris. That must end. Give up the information you harbor for him. There's no future in denying Barris. Does your future seem bright when you look at me, Sinx? It seems you hold all the cards. Every regime eventually falters. I'd be wise to get out before the towers start crumbling. I'll upload the files. There. Wipe from my system and relinquish to you. Does this earn your mercy? Sit still while I authenticate your information. Darth Vauron, I'm transmitting the materials from Colonel Senks's files. Excellent. Let me look them over. Uh, yes, this is the leverage Darth Barris has over my fellow Dark Council members. Now, they are free of him. Does this mean I get to keep breathing and winning the war for Corellia? I leave that decision to my formidable friend. What do you say? Does Colonel Senks live? Or die. Sinx, meet your new master. You heard him, Colonel. Your tenure under Darth Barris has ended. You answer to me now. Understood? Absolutely. I am yours to command. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must reprogram my security systems. Good work, my new friend. You are proving we can tear Barris down without compromising the Empire. I have news, but as I said, Barris likely has the place bugged. Uh, contact me when you clear the compound. You're good to go. God, I hate this game so much. That's Paul Edding, or Aiding, or Iding, or however you pronounce his goddamn name, aka the Colonel. All quiet here, my lord. Nothing suspicious and no further attempts on Darth Varrod. Captain Quinn is an excellent officer. I'm in good hands here. Barriss's false Jedi is still at large. He leads Jedi against Sith who defy Darth Barriss's will. My operative, Shadow, is searching for him. Unfortunately, Shadow is pinned down by enemy artillery. He has our information but had to go radio silent to avoid capture. I'll get the information directly. Shadow was cut off on the other side of Axial Park, beyond Coronet Zoo. The park is a frontline battlefield where the heaviest fighting is taking place. We have a safe house in that sector. Shadow will be waiting there. I'll carve a path through the fighting and rendezvous with your man. If you're interested, there is also an opportunity to help the war. The bombings that blocked Shadow are hampering our ground forces in Axial Park. If you could destroy the enemy artillery banks along the way, it would be most helpful. 
Either way, Shadow will tell you all you need to confront Barris's Jedi spy. We'll talk again when the deed is done. By which I mean I won't do that at all. But I'll think about it. Think, 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 think. I hate the game because it doesn't allow universal hotkeys while it's up. I wonder how many other people have problems with that. Like, it's obviously an issue for me because I stream. But, like, it's also an issue, it has been an issue if, for example, I'm chatting on Discord while I'm on this. Because it means I can't mute or unmute my mic. It, it, let me put it to you this way. How many of you have push to talk for anything? That wouldn't work in Tor. So you couldn't use your chat unless you alt tabbed first and then pushed to talk and then tabbed back into the game. I've been thinking about why Corellia looks worse than Narshada and Coruscant. I think that's part of the reason why. If you look down, it's just generic rock. It, and it's also brown. Maybe I'm just prejudiced against brown terrain. I don't know. Because I am prejudiced against brown. Like a decade of game design put me against the brown side of the force. The most visually pleasing planet in Tor. Honestly, probably Alderaan. Alderaan, Narshada, Coruscant... And Droman Kos and Korriban, I'd say, are the ones that actually have pluses to that. Uh, if you if you don't mind asking him, Psychotic, go for it. Oh, and Voss, thank you for reminding me. Yeah, I don't even want to think about what this place feels like to breathe in. As I as I complained about the very first time we did Corellia, like three weeks ago, Corellia is weird because it is simultaneously too dense and too open. Like, it's empty. Normally, this would be the situation where we'd give doodad positives, but I don't think it deserves it. Ah, could be psychotic. Yeah, Fallout New Vegas has some variety to its terrain, by memory. We'll see when we get there. Ironically, Fallout 3 tends to do that as well. Again, we'll see when we get there. Those will both be part of the BRPG plot. But now it's boss time! I don't know what that expression is. It's just... It's boss time! Fallout 4 definitely handles the color palette best. No question. Oh my god, he's invisible! Oh, never mind. Oh my god, she's invisible! Stop! Identify yourself or die! Okay. You better think twice before threatening me again. What? Speak up! My ears are still ringing from artillery fire! If we speak too loudly, this place will no longer be a secret. Yes. Yes, I see, of course. I'm sorry, my lord. The ringing in my ears has unnerved me. I have a lead on Darth Barriss's other spy. A team of Jedi have secretly landed on Corellia. I intercepted a transmission from one of them to Barriss, conveying readiness to lead the other Jedi into a death trap. Can you identify which of the Jedi is the spy? They only communicated in numeric code. No names were used. I can't even say if it's a woman or a man. Human or alien. I wish I could give you more to go on. The Jedi are gearing up in a Republic staging bunker. Enemy special forces deploy there, so it'll be a high-risk invasion. I'll clear out that bunker. I've never heard of anyone taking on so many enemies at once, especially with a room full of Jedi waiting at the end. When you're done, you can contact me from outside the bunker and I'll have Armageddon Battalion secure the area. I'll report back to Valron now. More power to you, my lord. I tried running it as admin. That was actually one of the earlier things I tried, but... All better. I was gonna say, I feel like I'm gonna have to do something with the key bindings to even get the macro side of things working. 
Now, I don't know why, but I have this weird feeling that I should bring Jaysa for the next mission. Which is... Game. Bye. I'm ready. There you go. You're not dead. Yeah. Oh, I should probably mention. Yeah, I know. Psychotic. That's why I was like, come on. Um, just waiting for it to run out. I have the very unpopular opinion that Fallout 4 is not that bad of a game. I know that's that's kind of damning with faint praise, but I stand by it. I would if I were to review Fallout 4, I bet you money it would actually be in that positive game, no question. I do think it's one of the worst Fallout games. If not the worst Fallout game. But I still enjoyed it, for what it is. I think the biggest problem with Fallout 4... Well, no, that's a lie. I think there were two really big... Three. Hang on. Can I think of any more? I think there were three really big problems with Fallout 4. First is the obvious. I haven't played Fallout 76, Tara. First is the obvious. The dialogue system, if you could even call it that. Fallout 4's dialogue system is, is bonkers, and every time someone makes fun of it, it's not even a joke. Am I the only one who does this, by the way? I do this in real life, too, like play games where you have to jump over the cracks. Anyways, <clears throat> dialogue system. Duh, the dialogue system sucks. That's just... Moving on. The second problem is the main story quest is actually really tight, strong, well-constructed, well-built, and then falls apart so hard and fast, it's ludicrous. Your invasion ends here, Sith. You are severely outnumbered. Like, it's legitimately like they just stopped writing the main plot at a certain point. Like, that's barely an exaggeration. You know what I mean. If you've played Fallout 4, you know exactly what I mean. The only difference is when people argue it fell off at. Some people argue it fell off when the airship showed up. I personally argue that the second you actually go to the Institute the first time, that's when the plot just stops. The third problem with Fallout 4 is the leveling system, if you're wondering, which is bonkers and backwards. Well, I've been too nice today, so... I don't know which of you is my target, so I'm going to have to kill you all. You are bold and foolish. Attack the Sith! I will admit, Don Crow, that it's difficult for me to not care about that, since I have held my baby girl in my arms when she was literally two days old. You know? And to be blunt, that very opening scene... Yeah, excuse me, that's actually a lie. It's more like the third opening scene, but... When we were woken up the uh, from the the sec the first time, not the second time, from the cryo chamber, that scene hurt so hard I had to mentally pause for a minute. You know, Sith, I'm on death's door. My name is Injai, Barriss's that. spy, embedded among the Jedi for over a decade. I should have revealed myself to you. Never imagined you could defeat us all. My fatal mistake. You were to deliver the Jedi to their deaths. That is achieved. Die at peace. You're kind. I die knowing that I served the voice of the Emperor. Spoilers. They no, didn't. So anyways. <clears throat> Salto. Ah, much better. Anyways, but ignoring the, the relevance of the baby plot, I do think the primary plot is well constructed and tight and interesting and blah 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 blah. It's even well constructed from just a pure like, objective thought process, right? Of exactly how you get from one point to the next, and how things are unfolded to you, and so forth and so on. It really falls apart the moment you get to the Institute, though. Shadow here. Dispatching Armageddon Battalion to secure the bunker you cleared. But there's been an attack on Darth Valoran and your crew. They said to patch you through when you called. Doing so now. Apologies, my lord. The attack was sudden. Unknown assailant, very powerful. On the run now. Taking Valran to a safe house in the Imperial Legislature. He wants you to meet us there. 
Tell me the attacker has been killed. Way out of our league, my lord. Lucky we got out of there in one piece. Almost to the safe house. Signing off now. Yeah, we'll get there. So, Don Crow actually asked a question a couple of days ago. What are your top five all-time favorite movies? Now, I get a lot of flack for the movies that I think are legitimately the best movies of all time, and I do actually think that. And those people can suck a lemon. So, we've got Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. We've got Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered well Country. We have Empire Strikes Back. I will also put on there Return of the King and Back to the Future 2. If I had to pick five films, those would probably be the absolute top for me in terms of construction, story, characters, etc. Because all five of those films are much more brilliant than film snobs tend to give them credit for. Now, all of those are geek films, and it's not like I don't appreciate non-geek films, but let's be blunt, those films are extremely well done, in my opinion. Now, if I was to be honest, it's really easy to look at the Lord of the Rings trilogy as one film, which is how I consider it. It is also easy to look at Back to the Future as one film, which I also consider that, despite the problems with that one. So, make of that what you will. That still leaves it as Star Trek II, Star Trek VI, Empire Strikes Back, The Lord of the Rings, and Back to the Future. I mean, say what you will, Robert Zemeckis really knows what he's doing. And while Back to the Future 1 lucked into success, Back to the Future 2 was him at his height. But anyways. <laughs> Do I think that the Emperor would be better off if Barris took over the pseudo-Emperor? No. Vitiate has enough of a don't care attitude that it's merely terrible. I think Barriss and his paranoia would actively cause the Sith Empire to crumble almost immediately. Now that being said, the galaxy would be better off that way. But, you know. Uh, it's kind of inverse of what it should be, Alex. It's also not very well described. More details to come. Ah, you made it! This is heating up, isn't it? Barris has taken off the sparring gloves. This assassin was the most lethal to date. Don't leave anything out. I want to know how it went down. The attack was sudden and vicious. There was no panic, no confusion. To a man, your people stared into the face of death and did not flinch. Captain Quinn must be commended. He took on the assailant with no mortal concern. I'm making up for a past indiscretion. My commitment to my lord is unassailable now. Let's move on. What's left to do? Barris's agents are neutralized. You have brought us to the end game, my friend. It's time for us both to go on the offensive. I'm ready to bang down the Dark Council chamber door and face him. All in good time, my friend. We've just reached the best part. In a secret lair on this planet, Barris has bound and indentured an ancient Sith spirit. He feeds off this not spirit's Kraya. power, stealing all her visions of the future. Everything he has built has come from her insights. If this spirit is to blame for Barris's strength, it must be destroyed. Ah, uh, uh, no, my friend. She is as old as the Force. She is the dark side itself. We must free her, not kill her. Only you have the power to break into his lair. And only I know the ritual that unlocks the spirit's bonds. Deliver me to her and we will strike the ultimate blow and cripple Barris from within. I knew it, Don Crow! Then I am one step closer to finally confronting Barris. We achieve this, and I will walk you into the Dark Council Chamber myself. Lead the way, 
And please be sure that assassin isn't waiting. I'll come when you signal. I mean, if it makes you feel any better, Don Crow, I will, as I never do, hesitate to give negatives to Fallout 4 too, because it certainly deserves them. Just don't be upset when I also give it positives. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, uh, this way, maybe? Yeah, let's just go this way. Maybe? Hang on. No, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. I mean, Fallout 4 is a severely flawed game. I just think it's a net positive. Mega Man! So, uh... Luko says, is there a game that had one good element that made me ignore the bad stuff and keep playing it? There's lots, but I'm trying to think of just one answer. I don't think the story qualifies as one good element that made me keep playing. You're not dead. Again, I haven't played 76, so I actually can't speak to that. And I don't like to judge a game I haven't seen. Lord knows I don't always have the common opinion on games. Oh, this feels right. Well, actually, maybe not. Hang on. Uh, should have just hearthed. Whatever. Otherwise, there'd be a wall in my way. I damn this planet. Um. Okay. One. All right. I got a dumb one for you. Star Wars: Empire at War. There's actually two reasons I kept playing that game, but I'm still gonna count it. One is the space battles, but two is. The fact that it's the closest thing we've ever had to a Star Wars 4X game. I know that's a pathetic reason to play a game, but it's not the only game like that. There are a lot of games that I have forced myself to play because, damn it, I really want X type of game, and X type of game doesn't exist. Speaking of which, what's that Star Trek 4X game? There's only one. And it sucks, and I hate it. Rebellion's different. Birth of the Federation. That's the one. I know, I know. That's actually an unpopular opinion. I know. When I casually mentioned in, I think it was a DS9 episode, the fact that I hated the Birth of the Federation, I got like 20 comments saying, what do you want about? That game is awesome. And I never knew people liked that game before. I hated that game. I just, I slogged my way through it because it was a Star Trek 4X game. I ended up throwing away the disc. That's how much I hated that game. So I technically don't own it anymore. Uh, is that this way? I guess. Anyways. And yeah, Star Trek did have two RTSs in the form of Armada 1 and Armada 2. Yeah, why do you think I got so big into Total Conversions back in the day, too? Starting off with Total Annihilation. That would have been early aughts for that. No, I have not, Jay Palmer. Because I didn't like Empire at War. That game sucks. Yeah, I said it. It's... It's AI is terribly designed. The auto-resolve can go straight to hell. The ground battles are boring at best. The controls in HUD are awful. The space battles are okay. The resource management and the way that they balance the galaxy level economy is bonkers. A lot of the scenarios are threadbare. Almost all the campaign missions suck. Like, I'm sorry. We actually did a review of Empire War. It's invalid now, but... It reaffirmed my opinion that that game is not actually a good game. It's okay. 
I played it for quite a while too. You know why? Because it was a Star Wars strategy game. And there's not that many of those. There's that terrible Force Commander. There's that Age of Empire clone. Literally, it's a reskin. Um, is that it? Because then there's Empire at War, and then Rebellion. I think that's it. God. Why are there no... It's Star Wars! Why are there no strategy games in Star Wars? What is wrong with you people? Uh, uh. Anyways, sorry. I'm still frustrated about it. 20 years later, I'm frustrated about this. Uh, okay, moving on. I would actually say, without hyperbole, that Star Trek Online is the best Star Trek game out there. Yeah, it's called Homeworld, Don Crow. Or any modded total conversion thing out there. There's several. There she is, the entity. Such pure, dark side energy. Is she not utterly beautiful? I suppose, if you like the smell of rotting death. Come closer. You are here to aid Varys. Knows I cannot resist. You said that sentence wrong. Desecrated my resting place. Where I waited for my love, your Emperor. I am bound. Every extraction pains. If you fail, he will punish me for welcoming you. Don't fear, Entity. The trial is over. I know the incantation. Now it is a simple matter. No, you do not understand. We are not alone. I was ready for more negatives. <laughs> At last, I've caught up to you again. I told you, I cannot be killed. Take off all that armor so I can figure out who you are. Don't be obtuse. You left me burning. Barras retrieved me, used the dark side to enhance me. Now, I am his greatest achievement. My eyes are no longer flesh. I see in a new way now. And the sight of you sickens and delights me. In minutes, the great Darth Vauron will disintegrate. Then the Entity will forever be in Barriss' control. Truth. The Death Field is powered by the machinery of drugs. Oh yeah, by the way, I did my machinery thing on purpose based on him, if you're wondering. That's all I needed to hear. Vengeance is mine! Stop slacking. But yeah, this isn't Kray. Let's just get that out of the way. I know that's a common theory, but no, there's no real evidence that this is Greya. Such a finish! Never felt so much pain. I fully expected to die. But I am grateful to have witnessed your destruction of that monstrosity. I'm sure it was quite a show. <laughs> I'm sure Barris didn't think so. Entity, is he aware of what's transpired here? Through me, the Defiler sees all of this. Wonderful! He must be twisting with fury. Now, we set up the ritual. The final gate between you and the beyond is lifted. 
Yeah, by the way, there's more evidence that this is Abeloth than there is evidence that this is Kraya. I'm just saying. Free. Oh, and that's my answer to you, Latari. Now I am forgotten again. And grateful. Remember me to the Defiler. My friend, you have been a revelation. It is time for you to confront Darth Barras. Oh yeah, by the way. You're probably wondering, where did the whole Kraya thing even start? Because, like, nothing in-game even mentions something about Kraya, right? Well, I can actually answer that for you. I was just double-checking to make sure I was right about this. Drew Karpishin came out publicly and said, Oh, yeah, no, it's totally Kraya. Now, hold up. Drew didn't write this story. Point number one. Drew demonstrably dislikes KOTOR 2, and, point number three, demonstrably does not understand KOTOR 2 at all. So, uh, citation needed. I will confer with the Emperor's hand. Of course, but I expect they will unleash the Emperor's wrath. Even now, Barris is near indestructible, but I know of no other ways to weaken him. Tell the hand. The Dark Council awaits. And I will be there to usher you in. Yeah, I don't have any respect for Drew, so... I suppose I'm the weirdo there. So... I think it was Jaludo mentioned earlier that uh, strategy games have always been niche. Unfortunately, that is true. Relatively speaking, it doesn't mean strategy games don't sell. It means that gaming companies' expectations are unrealistic. This is something I've been banging on about for better part of a decade now, so forgive me for bringing this point in yet again. But if you've been paying attention to anything I've ever talked about ever, you know that if you sell a few hundred thousand units for a game, you're actually doing pretty well. And if you get into the million range, you're actually doing really good. Those are good game sales. Period. The end. Now, gaming companies tend to look at sales figures of, oh, I don't know, GTA 5. Grand Theft Auto 5. Let's just look that up really quick here. And they tend to see, oh, well, we need to get 170 million shipped copies, which is, that, that's not true. But it's, it's, excuse me, 25 million. There we, go. we need to get 25 million shipped copies. That would be a good selling game. And those people are morons. But I'm dead serious about this. It, all my snark aside, let me, let me drop joking just to make sure that you understand that I am being very serious here. Gaming companies seem to look at the best-selling, like the actual best-selling games of all time, and use those to judge their expectations of game sales. And that's stupid. For example, just out of curiosity, I looked it up. Age of Empires 2, easily the best-selling Age of Empires game out there. Probably one of the best-selling uh, RTS games out there. 5.8 million copies. That's gigantic. However... I guarantee you that plenty of companies look at that 5.8 million sales and say, Oh, that's awful. I guarantee it. Uh, specifically, the HD version, not the original version, Jay Palmer. The original version sold 2 million copies. Still very good sales, by the way. It really is, Space Cadet. For a bit of cons uh, perspective here, StarCraft II, Just Wings of Liberty, sold 6 million copies. Which is, I, I think that actually makes it one of the best-selling RTS games of all time. But... <laughs> Still, I guarantee you people look at that 6 million and say, oh, that's not worth it. Idiots. Brain-rotted idiots. 
Moving on. You know, it's funny you say that, Blade Travel, because there are people who do exactly that. Uh, I believe Microsoft currently owns, owns the Age of Empires IP. I can look it up. I actually agree with that, Shaludo. Age of Empires selling that well? AoE 2 made a bit of a splash when it came out. Let's see. Yep, nope. It is under Microsoft right now. Go figure. I mean, it should be. It's the best RTS game ever made, Jay Palmer. <laughs> you get my point. So, let's talk to the best character in the entire game. Hang on, I got a special song just for him. Let's just uh, sit and appreciate this amazing, amazing character arc here. You're wise to aspire to my greatness. <sighs> and that was Brunmark. Two or three negatives? A real question. It's it's one of the two. Two or three. He's a failed character who they failed to capitalize on, and that is a bare minimum of two. I will admit, having gone through very recently, like we literally went from Skadge to uh ugh, to Brunmark. I actually do think Skadge is worse now. I th I think Skadge is worse. So there you go. We have we have conclusively decided. Makes me think that. So, Brunemark is a one-note, barely present character who can't speak English. Which makes him irritating. Skadge is a one-note brute who is literally a quest giver, has more screen time, insults us constantly, gets in the way of everything we do, and we're actually not even given an option to do anything other than agree with him or insult him constantly. Before he shoves his way into his party, whether we say yes or no and then continues to be an irritant and has more overall screen time to make him worse. Which is actually funny because we get Skadge later, if you're paying attention. We get Brunmark and Hoth. We get Skadge in Belsavis, and yet we still have more screen time with Skadge. I, I'm sorry, what, Caspian? I, I, what's the context for that? I apologize. Oh yeah, Skadge insults us. He does insult us constantly, that's true. I suppose that my point I was trying to reach for there is that it's it adds to the irritation factor. But you're right, if I was to give a negative for any character that's gives that insults us, then I'd have to give a negative to Morgan to insulting us, which, spoilers, I would not do. Because why would I? Have some Mega Man music. Excuse me, I'm gonna do paperwork! You ever see those really bad hacker movies? Where they're like hacking like, ooh, yeah. And they're, and they're doing, it's just non-hacking things at all. And they're like, I'm totally hacking. <laughs> just, what? We've got to hack more time! We're running out of time!
I forget what it was. There was some show I saw somewhere. Uh, what? That's strange. Oh. 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 Uh. Where... What? Where they were showing this hacker, and what he did, it showed him, he was just walking out, grabbing some groceries, came back, and there was like five different server farms just running something, and he leans in, checks the progress, and then goes out and does something else, and I just started laughing, because I was like, yes, accurate hacking! Um, boring, but accurate. Yeah, hang on, I'm, I'm catching up on the the audit here. Give me just a second. Yeah, exactly, Alex. Just, just running some brute force program that's been going for a couple weeks. Like you do. Listen, Warcore, we've got to get the edge. So anyways, negative 10 miscue. I like it, Jay Palmer. That's a great idea. Okay, so... I gave all those positives. Someone write this down, please. Storyboarding humor MSQ character. Caspian. Jesus Christ, Sith Warrior is just stomping! It still has face palmingly stupid moments, and it's still stomping! Alright, we're up to date. My lord, I have taken it upon myself to look into something of importance. Is there another moth out there you want to assassinate? You have a great sense of humor, my lord. If I wasn't on duty, I'd allow myself a good laugh. New generation hyperdrive what? is being developed. The Empire is negotiating for exclusive purchasing rights. But it could take months to be available. I've been saving my commission and was able to pull strings to acquire the latest alluvial dampers. For your ship. What benefit could that possibly bring? Alluvial dampers regulate the flow of ion particles into the hyperdrive to help keep it from overheating. These dampers are so efficient. They reduce the system's refractory period by 32.9%. Once I have them installed, we'll be able to make successive light speed jumps with one third less waiting time. Okay, that sounds boring, but that's actually extremely useful. I am incredibly impressed. They yeah, are that's nuts. Great precision. I'll get right to work. That's bonkers is what that is. We'll never see any relevance of that, but... Uh-oh, Ryman. Hang on, we've already talked to the best character in the game. Let's talk to the other nothing character. Yeah, this is definitely Pierce's theme here. Got a come from the team. The Bastion's back up and running with Imperial flags. Of course, Quinn has to run his mouth. Thinks Corellia's unstable. We'll never hold it. 
Jealous if you ask me. Our assault on the Bastion's part of history now. Perhaps the Empire will reinstate Black Ops permanently. Your mouth to their ears, my lord. But first duties to you. Swear Arlos built that security system himself. Never seen Laurent command so many. And when that gate came down, Tenido's finest hour. Just like old times. Flexed a lot of forgotten muscles out there. Should improve my skills in the field. Uh... Is that a Darth Nihilus Lego? That looks awesome. This took time. I expect a return on my investment. What's a soldier without his brilliant commander, my lord? Black Ops earned its name at the Bastion. Appreciate the chance. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, give me a second. I was going to say, I don't think there's an official Nihilist Lego, but I could be wrong. There you go. I don't get it, Alex. Yes, this is Ryman's new Lego. That is pretty legit. I especially like the detailing on the mask. Yeah, but what's a sheave, Alex? This is perfect music for her. Master, I've learned there's a bounty on my head. Isn't that wonderful? Apparently, some shaky Sith are growing concerned about my efforts to purify our ranks. It seems an act of desperation, don't you think? A mark that I'm doing an excellent job hunting down the traitors. You have them on the run, Jaser. Don't let them rest. Oh, I won't. You can be sure of that. This only adds fuel to my fire. I won't stop until every last soft and weak-willed Sith is eradicated. My work is so... gratifying. I just... Love being me. Well, that's terrible. Okay, so apparently Alex wasn't getting my uh, my counter joke there. The counter joke was that, you know, a lot of people, myself included, don't even really acknowledge Sheev as being Palpatine's name. So, I don't get it, Alex. What's a Sheev? Oh, hang on. Do you... Do you love me? Mm. Mm. Nope. Changed my mind at the last minute. <laughs> Darth Doom. The rest of the title I can't say out loud. Returns. Oh, the wrong song. Wrong song. Hang on. I actually meant this one. I'll give you a hint. that answer your question? I'm pretty sure I knew already. I need you to know, there haven't been any other men. I promised my mother I'd be married first. About the only promise I managed to keep. Vet, will you be my wife? Yes. Yes and yes! Okay, I just noticed I'm a full head taller than her. Like marriage ceremony stuff is pretty goofy, but it'll only take a couple hours. Wait, what? Couple hours? What? No, Vito. Reverse. Yes. Control C. Married. I behave myself all the way through that crazy ceremony. Very proud of you. Depends, Elizar. You ask a lot of versus questions. Now things of galactic importance await, as always. Yes. Uh, late 20s, I want to say. It's actually funny, because the only thing I know about her is she's supposed to be substantially older than Mission. Conversation? 
It is done. The time to confront Darth Barriss is now. His leverage gone. Vauron preserved. Barriss's bid to be named the voice of the Emperor is crippled. What remains of Darth Barriss is yours, Roth. He has gone to Korriban. Do as you must. Korriban. I return to where it all began. Darth Vauron returns to Korriban as well. Barriss dare not strike at him within sight of the Dark Council. The hinges are gone from the door. Vauron will authorize your clearance to land and usher you into the Dark Council chamber. Vauron is worthy of my loyalty. The Dark Council doesn't take kindly to intrusions, and Barriss still has support there. Vauron will back you. Then you must express the Emperor's will. Unleash the Emperor's wrath! unleash myself. I don't know if I call myself the best so much as maybe the worst, but I'll take the compliment, Elizar. To answer your question in full, I would say that uh, Geralt, if he knew what an orc was and knew how they operated and had the prep time and had the knowledge, then yeah, he could take on an orc. Because that's his main weapon. It's not his speed, it's not his potions. It's his knowledge. He knows how to fight the things he's fighting. If he does not know all those things, an orc would crush him like a bug. Warcraft Orc. My lord, the new alluvial dampers have been installed and the hyperdrive tested to my satisfaction. This ship is now the most hyperspeed ready vessel in the galaxy. I plan on taking advantage of it, Captain. When you are ready, say the word. Awaiting your next order. And I believe that's the end of the Quinn arc because we didn't romance him, obviously. We've got another. Whoops, that's the wrong button. Yeah, to be completely blunt, what would probably actually happen is Geralt would see the orc, which I remind you is like an average of nine feet tall and solid muscle stampeding towards him with an axe as big as Geralt is, and he'd probably get the hell out of Dodge. Been thinking, you'll always need someone in the Empire. Someone who knows how to get things done. Was hoping I could stay on board, make this assignment a little more... permanent. You're mine until you fall in battle, or I dispose of you. Rather die here than serve someone else. You've got a good group, but more will come. Apprentices, officers, your own battalions. You'll need training. Leave them to me. You will have the strongest army the Empire's ever... What about my kids? You gotta talk about my kids for this to be a last conversation. Serve me well, and that may be your reward. Looking forward to it, my lord. I mean, that's the point of the question, Alex. Warcraft is kind of a high-tier setting in general. So even a, you know, a relatively low-tier orc grunt is actually pretty high-tier for a lot of other conversations. Uh, for a lot of other settings. Which is the point of the question. At least I think so. You wanted to talk. More than talk. I told the crew to get lost for a few hours. Just you, me, and an empty ship. We're over Corellia. Where did you send them? What were you thinking we might do in those hours, wife? I might surprise you. I found my old shock collar the other day. Uh... Come on. Uh... Uh... So worth the wait. We'll have to set aside a few hours every day. Don't worry. I won't tell Jason what's keeping your schedule full. Okay. We're gonna not think about that ever again. Yeah, they're just hanging out in the airlock like... Yes, I know, Elizar. Believe it or not, I am not blind. I was, however, in the middle of a cutscene, so if I don't respond in the middle of a cutscene, it's because I'm in the middle of a cutscene. Now that I am not in a cutscene, thank you very much, Elizar. You're here! <laughs> the anticipation fills my veins with fire. I feel a hundred years younger. I can't wait to see Darth Barriss' face when I introduce you to the Dark Council. They ate Broodmark while waiting in the, <laughs> the thing. I love it, I love it. 
Get your holocam ready. Preserve it for posterity. Ha! <laughs> if only we could sell tickets! Meet me in the antechamber to the Dark Council. No one will dare to obstruct you on your way there. Oh, I know. Vet got rid of Brunemark. Think about that for a second. I should probably mention really quickly um, that the HUD has been updated if you missed that. What would you like that sub to go towards, Elizar? Oh, never mind. Disciples Gold, which. Put it over here. Give me a moment. Love me now. Hey, Narset. We're about to see the finale of Sith Warrior, so I'm in a good mood. I've actually got a song specially ready for this, even though we're probably going to stomp him. If I could kill one companion, who would it be? Other than Skadge and Brunemark? Zalek. The problem is all three are really easy because having gone through everything except for Agent at this point, I can now definitively say that those three are the worst companions. Corso is in the number four slot. Pretty much the same answer, Elizar. A properly trained Night Elf Sentinel is actually pretty reasonably high tier. There's a reason they're used to operating in very small groups and doing so on the wild with no support and no backup for long periods of time. Ironically, most Night Elf Sentinels would probably make good Witchers if the settings were flipped. If it makes you feel any better, I hate the speeder too. But it's okay. We'll only have to endure it for one more character, so about a day and a half more. Stop slacking. Batman? Batman Beyond, excuse me. So Terry in Cyberpunk. I I don't think Terry would make it very far in Cyberpunk. He's just too good of a kid. I hate to say that. He would need an enormous advantage to endure Cyberpunk. Darth Valron, Lord Rathari. Lord the other people I spared. Rathari found me and expressed his wish to be here. <laughs> a passionate young man. I told you I'd have your back when you faced Barras. I want to hear him scream. Your wish is about to come true. Rathari's presence will show the rest of the Dark Council that you have Sith support. Barris has called a special session of the Council to make his claim as the Emperor's voice official. I'm fashionably late. Your former master and the most powerful Darths in the galaxy await. <laughs> the play is yours. I've never felt more alive. Lead the way. Yeah, by the way, several characters from across the story can show up here. Obviously they don't, because we killed a lot of people, but they can. That had better be Darth Valron coming through those doors. Don't act like you were expecting me, Barris. Interesting. This isn't the time for one of your games, Valron. For the voice of the Emperor, you're uncharacteristically silent. Didn't the Emperor warn you of this? Yeah, there's Thanaton right there. I'm merely amused, young one. My fellows, this is my former apprentice. No doubt you're acquainted with his defiance. He was unworthy of me, so I excised him. The Emperor will inform me what is to be done with Valra. For now, assist me in destroying this rabble. Who dares face the Emperor's wrath? Is that a threat, youngster? Be careful. You might grant Barras his request. No. 
Barris claims to be the voice. This lord claims to be the wrath. I will not provoke the Emperor. The one who lives speaks truth. Fine. The Master will grant the slave's last wish. The Emperor calls for your death. Attack me if you dare. I was never, nor shall I ever be, your slave. For the first time... <laughs> Had enough, child? Can you feel your grip on life slipping? Why persist in this futile gesture of vengeance? Let go. Embrace your death. Forget the bravado, Barris. No one's buying it. Just being sporting. I would think you'd appreciate the chance to catch your breath. Your champion is failing, Vauren. And you'll be next. Is that coming from you or from the Emperor, Barris? It's hard to tell the difference. Burn. Don't mock me, Fop. Your patron just ensured your suffering will be epic, youngster. Now die! I always found Barris to be the hardest final boss. Although the Agent one is pretty mean, too. You're depleted, Barris. You hover a breath away from destruction. No! My powers abandoned me! Drink in the faces of your fellows. See your disgrace reflected in their awed eyes. I call upon the Dark Council to kill this fool! Now! The Emperor commands it! Dothma! Strike on the Emperor's behalf, or suffer his disfavor! I believe I'll take my chances. Ravage! Has your sense left you as well? Defend me! Defend the voice! I will not stand in the path of the Emperor's wrath. You think you've won? You think you can silence the Emperor's true voice? Deliver the death blow then! From beyond darkness, I shall strike at you! Someday, vengeance will be mine! I wash the galaxy clean of you. I cannot die! At last, the end of Barris. The air clears and my lungs breathe deeply again. You have proven that you are truly touched by the Emperor. The Dark Council knows that the Emperor's wrath has free reign. You are acknowledged, Wrath. Your actions will not be challenged as long as they do not contradict our own. You are answerable only to our ultimate master. I look forward to aiding the Dark Council in its most critical matters. Then our power has heightened. Let the enemies of the Empire tremble. The Emperor's wrath shall consume them all. Of course Thanaton didn't bow, he was freaking out about the fact that someone was on their way right at that moment. Unlike uh, Inquisitor, we don't actually have a final outro. Mm, so that's uh, kinda it. Not quite as good of an outro as Inquisitor, but still a very good outro. Let's, let's part and parcel this a little bit, shall we? But yes, the Roth's political position is kind of unique. They speak for the Emperor, which is exactly as vague as it sounds.
Oh, and I'd probably give that to the second Lich King, Elizar. And Illidan, respectively. I do not believe so, okay, no. Also, who do I prefer more as a character, Gul'dan or Ner'zhul? And they're both kind of bland characters, but I'd give that to Ner'zhul. That being said, alternate Gul'dan is a fantastic character. Looks like we have another final talk with... Oh my god! Yes! Yes! It's the greatest character of all time! You don't deserve this song. The Tallest Clan rejects us, but we are an outsider no longer. Sith understands our hunger. Sith knows the glory of the bloodbath. Our life belongs to this. Uh, what? Uh, the more blood on my hands, the better. <laughs> Are you still talking? Go away. Well, the second Lich King has powers over life and death, and so all he'd have to do is call upon anything whatsoever that happens to be dead nearby, on top of being an empowerful warrior, on top of being empowered by two of the most powerful artifacts ever made. Kerrigan's high tier, but Lich King is stupid. As for Illidan, I don't think I need to make that argument. Darth Vader's strong, but Star Wars has got nothing on Warcraft. My lord, after all we've been through, the good and the bad, I am dedicated 100% to you and your legacy. It goes without saying that I will impart whatever skills and knowledge I can on your future disciples. I mean, Illidan is one of the most singularly powerful individuals in Warcraft. And you're pushing Illidan against Vader. Yeah, no. Uh, so of course he's talking about kids. So don't say it. It is your job after all. Right. But for me, it's more than a job. It is a pleasure and an honor. I'll take no more of your time. Oh, I didn't start that yet. Here they are, Quinn. Is that Jasa? That is Jasa. I guess we're done with Pierce. What do you got for me, Jasa? Master, will it ever stop? The craving for greater power? The lust for more conquest? I imagine it's possible we will mellow. Someday. The way I feel, the drive you've awakened and sustained in me will never extinguish. My last breath will be expelled fiercely. I understand my power is so much better now, and I'll be able to bestow great advantages on your future offspring and disciples. Stop talking about my kids! We will build the most fearsome legacy the galaxy has ever seen. I Have you seen my body? I don't think I'm physically capable of having children. But yeah, exactly, Elazar. Star Wars is a high-tier setting because of its tech and its infrastructure. Think about what a death, uh, excuse me, a star destroyer really is. How many ship, how how much material, how much technology, how many personnel, how much expertise. Just so you know, I'm here for the long term. Whether that means more apprentices in the future. Or us adopting our own little horde. That's all I had to say. Adopting? Actually, that's probably a good idea. Never mind. I take that back. And I believe... Yep, that's everyone. Ladies and gentlemen. That was Sith Warrior. Damn it, Terra! I can't! Literally can't! Have you... Look at me! I don't have a waist! I know it's hard to see in the lighting, but look at that. I don't have a waist! It's just cybernetics! Behold! There's nothing there!
Actually, that's a fair point. Maybe we could just get genetic material from, you know, I don't know, a hair follicle or something. I'm going to go ahead and do an early lunch. I already decided this, because I knew Corelli would take a minute. And it did. It took two hours. Frickin' Corelli, am I right? And that was at lightning pace, too. But there is one last character we still have to do. First, let's do our audit. Thankfully, I've already done most of the work here, so let's just double-check a couple of things very quickly. Yeah, given the, the medical tech they have here, it probably shouldn't be that hard. Alright, so... Do you think this is going to be better than Inquisitor in score? Okay, that's a silly question. How much better do you think this is going to be than Inquisitor in score? <laughs> that's... I mean, we all know the real question. The real question is if um, Agent is going to beat Inquisitor. Excuse me, Warrior. Let me do a little math really quick. Damn! Hang on a second. So, between the cloaking everywhere and the shortcuts with heroics, that was the quickest class by far. 13.98 hours. We raced through that. So for a bit of uh, checkup, Inquisitor got 130, which is an exceptionally good score. Can I have a drum roll, please? Sith Warrior. Gets a 168.79. I mean, that's still a big jump up. That's way the hell up there. And I stand by that. Sith Warrior is awesome. Honestly, if it wasn't for a couple of drags in the middle of it, drags, I'm, I'm doing my thing, Brad. That would be even higher than it already is. What's funny is I'm pretty sure... Hang on. Yep. Um, Sith Warrior actually has more story negatives than Sith Inquisitor. It just has way more story positives. All right. Uh, you know what's next. <laughs> 